we have a very standard classification of groin hernia which is known as nias classification nias classification according to this classification we have four categories one two three four standard classification of groin hernia which is known as nias classification nias classification according to this classification we have four categories one two three four what is one what is two what is three what is four they are very 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 important remember both one and two are indirect inguinal hernia what is the difference what is the difference type one is the hernia where deep ring is intact and type two is the hernia where deep ring is bit patulous so try to understand type 1 is your pediatric type of hernia. So type 1 is your pediatric pediatric you can say pediatric inguinal hernia. So pediatric inguinal hernia and this is indirect. So indirect pediatric inguinal hernia is type 1. What is type 2? Type 2. So what is the difference between type 1 and type 2? The deep ring is intact. The deep ring is intact. The deep ring is intact in them. The deep ring is intact in them. What is type 2? If you talk about type 2 hernias, if you talk about type 2 hernias, it is indirect, indirect inguinal hernia. Indirect inguinal hernia. Now this is a type of inguinal hernia where actually the pathology is at the level of deep ring. So indirect indirect inguinal hernia indirect inguinal hernia and the problem is at the level of what deep ring so patulous deep ring patulous deep ring now what is type 3 type 3 is a hernia where there is a problem with the posterior wall also so type 3 type 3 is a hernia where there is a defective defective posterior wall defective posterior wall and if the posterior wall is defective you will get to see a lot of hernias what is the most common of them 3a 3a is direct hernia 3a is a direct hernia what is 3b you might get to see variety of hernias one amongst them is a scrotal type of hernia what is a scrotal hernia it's a complete hernia scrotal hernia is a complete hernia where the hernial contents or the here hernia loops they actually go to the base of the scrotum scrotal hernia then you also get to see a hernia which is known as rhomboid hernia rhomboid hernia rhomboid hernia if you talk about rhomboid hernia what is it also known as it is also known as pantaloons hernia pantaloons hernia so rhomboid hernia or pantaloons hernia rhomboid hernia or pantaloons hernia next we have hernia in glissade or sliding hernia hernia in glissade hernia in glissade or you can say sliding hernia sliding hernia what do you mean by hernia in glissade or sliding hernia this is a type of hernia which is exclusive to males and try to understand a part of viscous a part of you can say herniating sac is formed by a part of herniating sac is formed by the viscous itself so part of viscous is forming the wall of the hernia sac and this is really very dangerous because when you are trying to strip this wall you try to stretch and damage the viscous colon is the very common content on left colon sigmoid colon basically is a very common so it is type 3b so type 3b can be scrotal rhomboid or hernia in glissade type 3c type 3c is a femoral hernia femoral hernia then what is type 4 type 4 is a is a recurrent so recurrent you can say recurrent it is 4a 4b 4c nothing to remember in that remember type 4 is a recurrent type of hernia then we also have a classification system from the european hernia society so ehs system ehs system for groin hernias ehs system for groin hernias what is the ehs system for groin hernias this is again very 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 important now if we take ehs it means european hernia society but let me talk about e e stands for etiology etiology it could be p for primary so if it is 
if it is not associated with any cause it is primary or it could be recurrent or it could be recurrent if it is happening again then h stands for hernial defect hernial defect now how do you measure the hernial defect yes with the help of finger breadths finger so one finger breadth two finger breadth more than two finger breadth so it could be one finger breadth one finger defect so one finger defect that means up to 1.5 cm up to 1.5 cm two finger two finger defect 2f you will write 2f it is more than 1.5 up to 3 cm up to 3 cm defect yes three finger defect three finger defect if it is more than 3 cm defect we write as 3f then s stands for site where it is yes it could be medial it could be medial if it is a case of direct if it is a case of direct hernia it could be medial it could be lateral if it is a case of if it is a case of indirect indirect and then it could be described as femoral it could be defi defined as femoral so this is what is ehs classification you mention e you mention h you mention h so this is how this is how you go for ehs classification there are some other old classification system also which we don't know which we don't know which we don't uh, use actually that is why they are the two popular systems which are actually used